Welcome to our lecture online. Here on the left side of the board, we have the reference of the three possible solutions to our differential equation for the source-free parallel RCL circuits. The case for the, we have the overdamped case, the critically damped case, and the underdamped case. In each case, we have an equation that includes some constants a1 and a2, a1 and a2, a1 and a2, which of course then need to be solved for for a particular example for circuit. Now we're going to show you some examples of how to do that, but before we do that, we want to take a general approach to understanding the initial conditions in a circuit like this. So what are the two initial conditions? Well, we have an initial voltage across a capacitor and initial current through the inductor. So from that, we're supposed to find the voltage when the time is equal to zero, and we need to find the change in the voltage with respect to time when time is equal to zero, because after all, the current in our inductor is defined as 1 over L times the integral of V dt. So we're going to need to find the derivative of the voltage with respect to time when the time is equal to zero. All right, how do we do that? Well, let's go back to our original differential equation. When we went to the KCL circuit, so this is from the KCL circuit, right? When we looked at the current, from a particular node in the circuit, and we started from the node over there, we added up all the currents leaving that circuit, which was equal to the currents entering the circuit, which is equal to zero, we ended up with this equation right here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to apply the initial conditions. Now we're going to go with time is equal to zero, and we're going to apply that back to this equation right here. So when time is equal to zero, notice that the voltage across the resistor will be equal to the voltage across the capacitor, which is of course equal to the voltage across the inductor. After all, it's a parallel circuit. So this V, when the time goes to zero, becomes V sub naught. So here we end up with V sub naught over the resistance plus. Now here we have 1 over L times the integral from negative infinity to T of V dt. Now of course that becomes from negative infinity to zero. And by definition, the current, when time equal to zero, is the initial current through the inductor, which is equal to 1 over L times the integral from negative infinity to zero of V dt. So this whole thing here simply becomes I sub naught. So plus I sub naught, and then plus this, where we have the derivative of the voltage with respect to time set equal to zero. So C times dV, when the time is equal to zero, with respect to time, and that must also equal zero. So now what we've done is, we use the original equation that we derived a few videos ago from the KCL format. That means all the currents leaving a, a point in the circuit equals all the currents entering that same point, that same branch point. And then we set t equal to zero, this equation then becomes equal to this equation. Now, what we need to do is, we already found that the, that the original voltage when time equals zero is equal to the initial voltage across a capacitor, but what is the initial change, what is the initial derivative of the voltage when time equal to zero? That's what we're going to calculate over here. So we need to isolate this, so we're going to move the other two across. So that becomes C times dV when time equals zero dt is equal to, when we bring this across, we have a minus V sub naught over R and plus I sub naught, like this. All right, so now what we want to do is we want to divide both sides by C. If we do that, we get the following. We get dV when time equals zero dt is equal to minus, so we have V sub naught over R times C plus I sub naught over C. But then if we want to write that over the same denominator, what we could do, or this is I sub naught over C, then we can multiply both the top and the bottom by R, like this, and now we have the same denominator, and so now we can say that the original condition where we try to identify the rate of change of the voltage with respect to time and time is equal to zero is equal to minus the quantity and that would be V sub naught plus I sub naught R divided by R times C. And there is where we have the other initial condition 
in the general format equation. So that gives us the initial voltage when time is equal to zero and the initial change of the voltage with respect to time when time is equal to zero, which can now be defined as this. Take a quick look and see what that includes. That includes the voltage across the capacitor, the initial voltage, the initial voltage through the inductor times the resistance divided by R times C. Essentially, that's the time constant associated with the capacitor and the, and, and the resistor. So now we have the two equations that allow us now to find the initial conditions. Once you find the initial conditions, you can utilize those then to solve for A1 and A2 in the three possible solutions. So now, next step, of course, is to go ahead and actually do that. So we're going to show you three examples. A case where I have over damping, a case where I have critical damping, a case where I have under damping. We have the general equations with the specific initial conditions given to us. We should be able to calculate A1 and A2 in each case and come up with the actual finished equation that includes all the constants in the equation. And so we'll show you that, how to do that for the three cases on the next three videos. So stay tuned and here they come. Okay.